Data is what drives both what we do in this industry, but more importantly, I think actually drives what we do in our everyday lives, right? It, it drives everything we do. Um, hands, who's got pets? Anybody got pets at home? Yeah, what have you got? Dogs. A dog. Anybody got a hamster? So, um, a data story. So this is about uh, accurate data. Uh, the analytics on that data and um, I guess the correct level of insight, right? So two weeks ago, my 12-year-old son, Sam, uh, was given two hamsters, uh, Bill and Dave. And uh, we didn't get them from a pet shop. So we didn't really know their providence or where they'd come from or what they'd been up to before they arrived in my house. And this is a true story, by the way. <laughs> um, yesterday morning, uh, Bill and Dave became the proud parents of uh, six other little hamsters. <laughs> Seriously, this is true. And um, for half of yesterday, we were kind of delighted. You know, we were, you know, hey, we've got, you know, we've got more hamsters. We've got a family of hamsters now, right? It's cool. Uh, but then thought, hang on a minute, we didn't realise that we had, you know, a boy and a girl hamster, right? We didn't really understand the implications of of what that actually might mean. So, so I had to think about it and I looked it up on the internet today. And again, this is really, this is true. Um, so I've now got eight hamsters, right? You know, because I've got the two original ones and, and, and six additional. So theoretically, I could end up with, uh, you know, possibly four breeding pairs or worse, right? Uh, because actually I could have had seven girls and still the one boy, right? Um, Hamsters are able to breed from between uh, four and five weeks after they're born. Uh, and they can have up to 12 litters of uh, hamsters a year. <laughs> so, so I did the math. And uh, my son acquiring these hamsters without the right information, insight, data, analytics, whatever you want to call it, uh, could potentially end up with just over 2,500 ham hamsters uh, by Christmas. <laughs> Uh, so data, information, it's important. And, um, you know, as a, as a firm, I guess, um, S&P Capital IQ, part of Standard & Poor's, so hopefully folks have at least heard of Standard & Poor's, right, ratings agency, even if you haven't heard of the S&P Capital IQ bit. My current role, I've been there two years. I actually, interestingly, worked for a very small company that was part of the CME group. So uh, before moving over to S&P Capital IQ, I was physically based in this building for uh, about a year before the CME suddenly realized that CMA, credit market analysis, had no real fit with their business. So they sold us off to S&P Capital IQ. So I now run um, our enterprise feeds business. And that sounds very grand and a little confusing. But what it really means is any data that we sell via a feed, i.e. not a desktop, uh, you know, like you heard Steve talk about, uh, is my responsibility. So it's quite a big business. It's about 400 million, I guess. And I guess the reason, you know, the reason we think data is important, because if you think about it, uh, nothing happens in our industry without it, right? Nothing. Uh, you know, there are no fiscal decisions made. Uh, there are no financial trades made. Uh, there are no mergers and acquisitions. Um, hell, I guess even, you know, there aren't uh, many Wall Street bankers that get their bonus, right, without the right data and information. And you've heard from Steve, and he stole a little of my thunder, about how um, you know, the electrification, if you like, of digital markets meant that um, open outcry died, right? The reason it died, as you heard Steve say, was because uh, global data became accessible in an electronic format. Um, and because of that, it brought the world much closer together, I guess, uh, than, it had ever been, than it had ever been before. And we were responsible, I guess, for the exponential growth in all of the markets, right? Um, if you think about, and I don't suppose anybody in the room, or not many folks actually, were probably uh, alive in the 1980s. But um, if you think when, oh, does anybody know when Apple went public? No. 
nobody in the room knows when Apple went public. It was 1980. Anybody like to guess how many shares were traded that year? Bit of a big question to ask, really, from young folks that didn't even know the 80s existed, right? So uh, 4.6 million shares uh, were traded in 1980. Anybody got any idea how many Apple shares were traded yesterday? Oh, that's a man that did his homework. Yeah, about 55 million. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, so you can see how uh, you know, our markets have really changed, right? They've completely and utterly changed. And firms like the one that I work for, um, not only a part of that change, you know, we provide data on over 250 exchanges, uh, countless uh, terms and conditions, countless amounts of reference data, uh, all the derivatives markets like the CME, all the equity exchanges. Um, but we also do something else quite interesting. We rate companies, right? So both public and private companies we rate uh, to give you our view of how financially sound they are. Um, and we also rate governments, right? And we also rate countries. Um, and I guess we're always there, right? We're in the eye of the storm when there's a credit crisis, sometimes blamed for being partly the cause of it. But we're always there at the recovery as well, right? It's data like the firm that I work for that provides the data that you see on the news every night telling you where the markets are at. And so if I look at, I guess, where I think the market's going, you know, we've already touched on, I think, we've moved from open outcry, a uh, single face-to-face -face relationship and in a single exchange. And I think we're now moving to a world of um, multiple data sets. So, you know, traders now uh, can sit and trade multiple markets. They can analyze multiple markets. They can compare multiple markets. Um, and as we heard Steve talk about, we've now moved into you know, algorithmic trading. Um, and it's interesting to know what, you know what comes next. And it strikes me, if you look at how technology tends to evolve, that probably the answer uh, lies more with you folks than it necessarily does with the uh, five of us sat at the front. Because um, some of the things that we're trying to do at S&P Cap IQ, and you can see it's, it's kind of really relevant in, in trading terms, is we're, we're trying to work out how you can capture things that aren't quite so uh, financially physical, right? How do you capture sentiment? And we heard Steve talk about it a little bit, you know, when traders trade that, that kind of emotion. How do you capture the emotion? How do you capture the sentiment that you can now read in the social media that you folks are far more familiar with, <laughs> certainly anyway, than I am? Um, and so for us, I think, as a firm, um, you know, the challenge is how do we attract new talent like you folks to come work for firms that uh, sell data, don't seem terribly exciting, have a name that you've probably, you know, is at the bottom of the list of the five names that we had here. But interestingly, what we do do is we have great graduate and great young people training programs, right? Um, Bogonia actually from, is also from S&P Cap IQ at the back there. Wave your hand, Bogonia. Hello. <laughs> Just embarrass you for a second. Um, we have a two-year training program, right, for graduates and young folks. Some of those folks uh, come s straight from university. Some actually come after having done a job for a couple of years. Um, and they come to us, and they're trained across all asset classes. Because remember, you know, we're, we're asset class independent, right? We have four, four and a half thousand customers across the globe trading, making business decisions on every asset class that you can imagine that we cover. And as a consequence, what we think we do is we train uh, you know, the next year's clever financial folks, right? Who have a really good understanding of the market. And I would urge you, if you don't know anything about us and or our competitors out there, the Thomson Watchers, the Bloombergs, the IDCs, et cetera, this world, go find out some more about them. And if, especially for the folks in the room that are looking for a career, in my view, it's a, probably a pretty good place to start. So look at the website, um, drop me an email, come talk to me or bug on you if you'd like to. Um, but I guess more importantly, if anybody in the room uh, wants a hamster, then uh, come see me after the break. <laughs> Thank you.